person sees all. I want to start by saying thank you to each and every one of you who took the time to subscribe to this channel. Do you guys remember Comet Neowise? Oh, we just missed, I missed anyways, the C2022 E3ZTF. Is it long enough as a name? I wasn't able to capture it. But it would not have been as close as Neowise. But when Neowise went by, there's a lot of captures and things happen. This object turns. This object was going by Neowise, like side by side, then veered off, went by in front of it, seen with the infrared camera, and actually burned up. So while I was watching the comet Neowise not that long ago, I noticed a couple of objects in the sky. You want to talk about debris and crap flying around Earth? Yeah, there's lots of it. And some of the things that we capture are not all UFOs. That's why we analyze the characteristics of all the things. This is pretty cool. During uh, the time I was filming Neowise at the back, like that's just, you know, bugs and shit going by. Uh, that's another thing that infrared cameras capture, right? It's easy to tell people, oh, well, look, I got a UFO, I got a UFO. But when, once you capture about 100 or 1,000 of these captures and sightings, you're, you're able quite easily to distinguish the differences on what's real and what's, what's not debris, right? Like this. Here's uh, two UFOs going close or across the tail of Neowise going by one evening while I was filming it. Those are really cool captures. Why am I talking about comets and meteors and asteroids going by the sun? Well, because now uh, more than ever, we know that there are a lot of asteroids and debris around us. What's this? Yeah, this one only happened once. Check it out. So this object's going by and I said, whoa, that's pretty big. And, oh, look, it's tumbling. It's actually rotating itself as it's crossing the sky. In lower earth, there's lots of rocks, guys. And I mean lots. And that's aside from the ones that they're not talking to us about. Here's an object going right across the sun. Looks like it's going through the sun, maybe a part, partly into its corona. You know, basically nothing makes it by the sun, right? Unless these objects are bigger than Earth and completely metallic and solid. I mean, rocks just blow up, disintegrate as they go by the sun. That's a fact. Nothing makes it by the sun. And this sun in our solar system is attracting a whole lot of objects. And this was before the solar cycle 25 leading up to the time where they were saying that in 2025 the sun is going to be at its peak so how much more of that rock is it going to haul into the solar system they're finding planets in our solar system now is it because we have a better way of researching or is it because they were really just trying to hide all these things from us you know here's a beautiful capture this is beetlejuice 219 it exploded well this was 218 right and this is beetlejuice um, a comet going by and why do i say a comet well you see a tail end as it's going very close to beetlejuice this object's burning up you can see its wings of light at the front there one of six times that i captured an asteroid or rock or comet with wings like that it's absolutely incre incredible there's plasma leaving the sun. That's what the sun does, for those who've never seen it. Very rare to see also, no matter what telescope you have, no matter what filter you have. If you have a lot of patience, you can sit there and wait for one of these rocks to spit out of the sun. And I tell you, it's going to happen. You can see it here. It's quite, quite extraordinary. Nothing less than extraordinary because it's events that are rare to capture this well. I keep staring at the sun and I keep staring at it, not with my eyes to go blind, but with the infrared cameras even and with the regular cameras, with the filters, always trying to change the wavelengths to be able to see some of these objects, adjust the exposure. And well, before I show you today's sun, actually, sorry, yesterday's sun, February 11th, which was very aggressive, we're going to head over 
to an object that landed and crash landed onto the moon. One of five or six objects that I caught. I'm going to try to show it as well as I can, slow it down. We don't know what this object is, but we know that satellites are very small, so we can't see a satellite that large, and it's not going to lift up fire um, off of the surface of the moon. So I'm going to try to show it to you different ways here. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it properly. Do you see that? Big ass object. It even has a shape and form. Here it is coming down in the center, crashing. It'll crash over to the left here. You'll see what rises up. Watch what rises up off the surface. Boom. It doesn't look like much, eh? But it's a lot. It's rising up off the surface of the moon. Watch it here come down at the end of the arrow there. And you can see its nose is on fire also. It's coming down fast enough. And it's going straight down into the moon. I, one of many objects I was able to capture hitting the moon. But you got to film it a lot. That's for sure. I mean, you have to really watch the moon to be able to see these things. And notice I was off of the side of the moon to be able to see it. But that, guys is freaking humongous. So there are objects in space that are crashing um, uh, on Earth, I imagine, also, but uh, especially on the moon. There we can see it going down there and the fire that happens the minute it hits the surface. The best way to clarify it was this way, and it's not very big, but you can still see that the object is coming down and it's going to crash into the moon and fire rises up off of the surface so february 11th hey, look at that i was able to capture the sun so this is a few hours ago the sun is yet again aggressive and i'm not able to see it for a very long time because the clouds usually hit Sunday, January 15th, it was a busy sun with M-class flares and coronal mass ejections, but now, Saturday, in other words, this footage that you are watching right now was filmed on February 11th, just a couple of hours ago, and what happened is an X 1.1 flare, and now this is not good. When you get to the X flares, they are the biggest of the flares. So we're talking about Sunspot AR. Let me see here. We're talking about Sunspot region 3217. So the X 1.1 solar flare, X3 strong from the Sunspot region 
3217. The solar flare, however, they say rather impulsive, and it is not likely that it has launched a coronal mass ejection into space, thankfully. We're all still um, analyzing and waiting for other events that took place on February 11th to see if any of those have a chance to impact our planet. Oof, not good, guys. The sun is getting more and more aggressive. We're lucky. We've been lucky the whole way through so far. But yeah, lots of, you know, lots of activity again. X flares. I'm hoping to get the sun today again this morning on the 12th. It's even worse, apparently. And I'll get that up on the member side, not to bother you all here with the sun videos. But those of you who appreciate it, it's... It's what's going to take over the news in a couple of uh, weeks, maybe months. At one point, everybody's going to be concentrated on the sun because they're no longer going to be able to hide the dangers of, of what is coming. It's, it's a Russian roulette, the sun. So it's turning around and it's spitting off winds and losses wherever it wants. So it's very, very dangerous for electromagnetic pulse attacks and whatnot from the sun, not just from... Russia and China. <laughs> Thanks, members, by the way, for being here. And all of you, everything you guys do, comments, like the videos, come to the streams. Look where the moon and the sun are right now, side by side. Thanks for watching the videos. Doesn't matter cause disclosure's coming soon Cause disclosure's coming soon